Hey KU fans, welcome back inside Wells Fargo Arena here in Des Moines, Iowa. Now it's the side of the second round, Ben. Yeah, this isn't your typical first round side. No more. No. Second round. Second round. NCAA tournament. <laughs> you might be confused that it's a Final Four because it's Kansas, it's Kentucky, it's Indiana, and it's UConn. And that sounds like a Final Four, but as you well know, it's not. A couple of second round games. As if Kentucky, Indiana wasn't a nice enough treat for the fine folks of Des Moines. They get the, uh, the dessert of Kansas, UConn. We spent the entire day Friday kind of looking at the matchup, looking at UConn, finding out a little about them, a little about what they know about Kansas, and, and what was the biggest thing you learned about the, the Huskies, the ninth seeded team that beat Colorado in the first round? Well, I think what came across in talking to the players, at least, is just how confident they are. Right. And of course they're confident. Right. They play at UConn. I mean, that's one of the that's one of the legit programs in the nation. You, yeah, you talked to a lot of guys about that kind of the, the blue blood mentality. Exactly right, and, and that's that's interesting. Um, you guys are going to enjoy that story for sure. But I, I think it's just like they they know that they belong in this game. They know they can compete with Kansas, and that's that's really like step one in, in winning a game. Like no doubt. This. Yeah, so. yeah. Omar Calhoun, a senior who was on the 2014 national championship team, uh, one of those. Perfect victories that Kevin Ollie had. He's seven and zero in the tournament. I thought he said uh, one of the very cool things that he said of many was, was well, "I'm seven and zero, but it's because of those players. You know, I don't go out there and play. I just prepare them the best I know how, and, and they go out and get the job done. Uh, really good dude. Really impressive coach. Obviously, uh, he's proven that already. But you can really tell in talking to him and, and getting to know a little about this team why it works. And I think matchup wise, I think it's a decent matchup. For UConn's quick, they have good guards, but they're still a little sporadic at times, and, and they right. get in trouble. You mentioned uh, when we were just talking about it earlier, they have those long stretches where things just kind of look haphazard or, or a little chaotic, and I think Kansas being a more poised and polished veteran team should be able to not only force some of those for UConn, but also avoid having those happen. Colorado suffered because of that, right. but Colorado doesn't have near the guards that Kansas has, and I think that'll be a a matchup, even though UConn's guards are decent and solid, I think KU has the advantage there. Yeah, do you, do you remember the last couple of years, Bill Self would always talk about how his team seem, seemingly have these multiple personalities, like, sure. oh, my, oh my God, they look great, sure. and then for 10 minutes they look like garbage, sure. and he'd be, just be like ripping his hair out trying to figure it out. I feel like you kind of see that with this UConn team. A little bit, right. They look amazing in like spurts, and you're like, oh wow, this team could make a deep run, and then they'll play... Ten minutes where they just they can't get anything to go offensively. Yeah, but and, and that's I think that's just kind of the team they are at this juncture. And I, you know, if KU lost in the second round each of the past couple of years because of those type of issues, sure. along with some other things. Sure. But that's that's one thing that's going to keep you from advancing. And that's that kind of inconsistency in a game is not going to help you beat a team like KU. Right. Totally agree. A couple of key areas in this game. I think the glass will be huge for both teams. Whichever one sort of wins that war, I think, has a really good chance to win this one. And, and I like Kansas there. I think Landon Lucas has been so good there. But, but even the guards, as you've seen all year, Frank Mason can go down and, and, and help there. And, and I think it's a big game for Perry Ellis to hit the boards. He needs to be a factor there. He can't have one of those one or two rebound games. He's got to go get five, six, seven rebounds. Uh, the other is transition. I, I think that the fact that the UConn wants to get out and push the pace is not a problem. Kansas will absolutely play that if, they, if they're – they're forced to, and I think that fits into their comfort zone too. One area that could be a little bit of a concern, though, is the free throw line. You just kind of step there and you knock it down. Well, UConn does that better than anyone. And also getting to the line, KU is something like 128th or 130th or something like that. You guys know about their struggles with the free throw line. If that happens here, it could be scary because UConn really, really is solid when they get to the free throw line. So it'll be a big key for Kansas to keep UConn off the free throw line. But if they do send them there, KU's got to match it and hit their free throw too. I, to your point on, on free throws, I think both of these teams are so good defensively at uh, first shot defense, sure, you know, just sure. contesting and making everything tough. That I mean, those are going to be the opportunities where both teams are going to need points because it's not going to be a, a high-scoring game out there. I think both teams are good enough defensively that we're not going to see a game in the 80s. I agree with that. Maybe even 70s. Totally agree. Who wins? I think KU wins. I think just the experience and the, the consistency. There you go. Know, they, they're just, they, they've got veterans. They they don't go through those lulls that we've seen UConn go through. Like, 
you found in the first half against Colorado here the other day. Yeah. Just, Nothing. you're kind of scratching your head like, this is the same UConn team that looked so good a, a week ago during, you know, conference tournaments. Right. So I think, I think KU's consistency is going to move them on to the Sweet 16. I agree completely. I've got Kansas. And I think it'll be a game where KU might end up winning by 12, 13, 14 points, but it'll be a game where they win it in quarters by just a little. They win the first 10 minutes by three or four, the second 10 minutes by three or four, and at the end of the game, that adds up to a 12-point win somehow or whatever. So I, I think that they're good enough, like you're saying, to do that and, and to just control the way this game's played. I also think it's a huge, huge... Huge advantage for Kansas that they scored 105 points in the opening round and did so without Devontae Graham scoring a single point. You guys know that by now, but he did not score, and they scored 105. I think he scores a lot in this game. I think he's really good, helps control the guard play, helps control the pace. Kansas moves on to Louisville. That's one Louisville trip, another Louisville trip. Kansas wins. Let's get out of here. We'll go watch the game. You guys enjoy it, and we'll have all your coverage throughout the game. And, of course, after when it's over. We'll talk to you guys a little later on on KU Sports Extra on the road.